deserted. Well, I came down here with about a half a plan. My plan was where that white tree is, way on the other side over there is where we were gonna set up. That's where we were shooting from the other day. And I was gonna take the bush hog and kind of pie pattern this whole thing and just cut paths straight out from that uh, all across this undergrowth because this stuff's pretty tall and it gets hard to see anything in the late evening hours when the deer start moving so because we already had this back end cleared out a little bit I think what I'm gonna do I don't want to cut all this field down but I think what I'm gonna do is set up two shooting areas one back here facing north and that one there facing north and then uh, we'll hunt in the swamp back there a little bit too but I'm gonna run a couple of patches of rye grass through here and out on the other side over there and just make two spots this is the back of high ground right here it just goes back into hundreds of acres of woods and swamp <laughs> I know it's hard to tell grade changes on video but this goes downhill pretty fast I haven't been in here in uh, a year or two maybe There's almost always deer tracks or some kind of sign down in here. Though. I used to could get in here on my three-wheeler. <laughs> Was that a long time ago or what? A three wheeler. Look at all these pretty cypress knees. Yeah, you can tell you can tell the water depth in here. That's right at about six foot. Right here where I'm standing, and it goes downhill another four or five foot over there. Sometimes it's dry and sometimes it's full of water. You just never know. Hang it right here. This, uh, I think this grass here, I'm not sure what kind of grass it is, but I think they're coming in eating it. There's a big old green patch over there. I don't know if I could get up through all this undergrowth mess to show you but right on the other side of this berm here is the river there's the river down there and for a good long ways a couple miles I'd say it's a sharp drop off so there's nothing crossing the river there's some deer wandering in here I see tracks all over the place in here Got some chest high knees in here. I never noticed this one before. We got an eight foot tall cypress knee here. That's not a broke off tree. I hear December's the best time to plant corn. I think somebody's messing with me. That last pile I planted is gone and none of it even sprouted. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. I bought me a new wild game innovations camera a few months ago and I lost it the first day I had it. And I just found it going through a <laughs> box of junk and old clothes. I have no clue how it got in there. This will be one I'll be using on that feed plot down there though. Might do a review on it sooner or later. I've got it set on a, a photo capture setting. 
see if it'll go off and you can hear it. See what kind of noise it makes. There's our company logo. This is a uh, infrared LED. Drawback to it is when the LEDs shine, you can see them with the with the naked eye, with the human eye. They're not real bright, but you can tell they're there. So I'm assuming if I can see them, deer can see them. I can also hear it, uh, hear the shutter work when it takes a picture. I don't know how I've got it set up, so hopefully I don't have to wait too long for it to take a shot. That's the screen that comes up when you turn it on for the settings. There's the settings on the bottom of it. And the battery tray and the card slot. That was the shutter working. Uh, the, the lights are on right now. I can see them. There you go. They do show up on camera, but that's as bright as they get uh, as far as what you can see. But they are casting light. I don't think the camera will pick up with the... I don't know. I guess the camera will pick up what it's shining, but it does illuminate to catch a picture in the ca in the uh, game camera. But you can see that in the woods at night, and that's not good. My other infrared cameras don't do that. You can't see them at all. <laughs>